Hello and welcome. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, after a little bit of a search, have finally got themselves their new offensive coordinator. Of course, Dave Canales leaves the team to go join the Carolina Panthers as their head coach, and that left a hole on the Bucs staff. So, Tampa Bay, Todd Bowles, they went out, took their time, and they settled in on Liam Cohen. My personal take on it, I had two main boxes that I felt like the Buccaneers needed to check with this hire, and Liam Cohen actually checks them both. So, number one, my main thing that I thought was, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the most important thing was, does the new hire have any sort of a history or a working relationship with Baker Mayfield. And I felt like this was important for a few different reasons. Reason number one is obviously when you have a franchise quarterback or somebody that you believe is a franchise quarterback, it's very important to treat them as such. And Baker Mayfield, whether you believe in him, you don't believe in him, table it. That's a discussion for another day. Baker Mayfield is lined up to be put in a position where he will be treated as a franchise quarterback. If you have a guy who you want to be that guy and put in that role, then the system, the scheme, the team in general, right, it should be built around him. And a nice way to do that is to get a guy he's familiar with that's familiar with him to call the plays for the offense. Another thing that I thought was important with regards to, you know, a guy who would be able to have some sort of a, a past history with Baker Mayfield is continuity. Because obviously it's going to be difficult to have continuity when you switch offensive coordinators and you're not promoting somebody from the prior offensive coordinator staff, right? Dave Canal has left and took a lot of people with him, so you're not promoting somebody who is directly beneath him and keeping everything status quo with a different face, right? You're changing things, and obviously there's going, that's going to create a lack of continuity. But at the same time, you can keep the continuity relatively, relatively in sync if you find somebody who has similar ideals and similar beliefs, which is I think what the Bucks, it seems like what they had in mind, they definitely did take a lot of what I would have taken into account, I feel like they took into account. And the other thing, the other big box that I felt like needed to be checked, besides somebody who had a history um, or past relationship, working relationship with Baker Mayfield, was you want somebody from, and it, sometimes it's really just, you know, it's all about who you know. You wanted somebody who came from the 49ers coaching staff, the Rams coaching staff, or the Dolphins coaching staff. In my mind, that is the main source of really where we're seeing offensive coaching talent come from. And the other thing, when you get someone from those staffs, the... This, stylistically, the scheme is going to be what I think fits Baker Mayfield and fits the Buccaneers offense ideally. I think the Buccaneers are built to be a play-action pass team. I think getting your quarterback outside the pocket, I think setting up the um, setting up long balls down the field off of quarterback movement and play-action is something that the Buccaneers, I think personally, I think they are built to do. And I think that you can expect a lot of that when you have a system in place from one of those. I, um, what I would say one of those trees, one of those coaching trees, right? So if you get a branch off of one of those trees, in theory, that is a facet of that branch. And I think the Buccaneers, they got a guy from the Rams coaching staff, although he wasn't directly from the Rams coaching staff, he's indirectly from the Rams coaching staff, had a history of being on the Rams coaching staff who did work directly with Baker Mayfield while Baker Mayfield was there. And when Baker Mayfield was with the Rams in his short stint, right, Baker Mayfield was successful, which I think is also important too. 
The other thing I, I think of note, it's a small quote that not a lot of people, it didn't really catch a lot of buzz, despite the fact that I do think it's a impactful quote. Earlier this season, Baker Mayfield talked about, or earlier I should say, in, I guess I should say last season, Baker Mayfield talked about um, how he really liked being with Tampa, and he really liked a lot of what the Buccaneers were doing, and he felt like it was really only the second time in his entire career that he was being asked to do things that fit him, right? The scheme suited him, and and a lot of what the Bucks' offense was doing were things that Baker Mayfield was good at, essentially. And they that prompted the question, well, what's the other time, you know, in your career, if this is the second, what's the other time that you felt that way? And he cited his time with the Los Angeles Rams. And I think it's very meaningful that you then, after you lose Dave Canales, you then go get someone from that Rams coaching staff who coached Baker Mayfield while he was feeling comfortable and while he felt personally like he was thriving and in the best possible situation for his success. I think that bodes well for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I also think it's a big deal in getting Baker Mayfield back, right? The Buccaneers obviously want Baker Mayfield back next year. That much is evident. This is a great way to go about it and a great way to ensure come contract time, Baker Mayfield is going to be a little bit more inclined to stay than maybe he already would have been. That's my take. What's yours?